Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. This is going to be another revision video and we're going to look at the human causes of climate change. So if you didn't see my last video about the natural causes of climate change, I suggest you go back, have a look at that because we're going to be looking at some of that in today's video as well. So it's really important we look at this idea of human causes of climate change because there is a big school of thought out there which suggests that humans aren't responsible for climate change and in fact it is a completely uh, natural process. In fact, there's some very high profile people who would have you believe that climate change is a hoax or it isn't a problem. And a lot of that discussion comes from the idea that because of the reasons we saw in the previous video of the natural causes of climate change is a natural process and human beings don't have any influence and don't have any impact. We're going to look at that today and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to make your own mind up whether human beings do have an impact or not as far as climate change is concerned. So if you watched the previous video, this is where we left off. So we looked at the natural causes of climate change and we talked about how volcanoes and swamps give off greenhouse gases, create that greenhouse gas layer, and then how forests take that in and we keep it in a perfect state of equilibrium. And then the greenhouse effect keeps the sun's energy trapped in and keeps the, water, the earth at a constant temperature. So this is the situation we are in. But we, but we also talked about the equilibrium changes. So human beings. So we're going to have a little look and see what human beings do or have done throughout history and what those actions have done to impact that sense of equilibrium. What influence have human beings had on the climate, if any? So if we take the state that we're in, we're going to look at various things that human beings have done throughout history which might upset or change this equilibrium or this balance. First up is the intensive farming of animals. So as the global population has, begin, has increased rapidly, so has the demand for food, and in particular, meat. This is a particular demand in the developed world, but it is a demand which is hard to meet. In order to meet it, human beings have had to intensively farm animals. Now what we mean by intensively farmed is taking animals outside of what would be considered a, a normal reproduction cycle and encourage them to breed so that there is more and more meat available for human diet and human consumption. Now most of the animals which are farmed for meat are vegetarian and they tend to feed primarily on vegetation which when it is digested and broken down produces methane. Methane is a greenhouse gas. If we look back at our diagram, this intensive farming produces methane, this greenhouse gas, and it actually adds into this layer, so it adds into this layer of greenhouse gases which surrounds our planet. Next up, on a similar theme, is large-scale rice farming. So again, as the human population has grown, it's really important that the dietary needs are met, and in particular what we call a staple crop, so staple foodstuffs from around the world. In particular, rice. Rice is the most common staple crop in the world, and in particular, if you look at the rise of population in Southeast Asia, rice is a very, very common foodstuff. Now, in order to grow rice effectively, you need to have pretty wet ground. The, the actual plant needs to be submerged in water. So what then happens is the vegetation that's around that plant will begin to rot, essentially creating a, a swamp. Now, as we've seen, as previously, in the natural causes, swamps produce methane. So again, all that rotting vegetation produces methane. Now, as this is done on such a large scale, rice farming can actually represent a quite a considerable amount of greenhouse gases being released into the atmosphere. So again, this is human beings having an impact on this system and adding in more of that greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. So this is the one most people think about when we're talking about human causes of climate change. It's the burning of fossil fuels in factories. This isn't a new process. This is something that's been going on for a long time since the Industrial Revolution, where human beings have been taking fossil fuels, mainly coal, but also oil and natural gas, and burning it to create energy, and then using that energy to drive machinery to make our lives more efficient and to make our lives more you know, easier. The problem we have is when we burn fossil fuels, they release lots and lots of different gases. The one that we're concerned about, as far as climate change is concerned, is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is quite a significant greenhouse gas. And so by burning these fossil fuels in these factories, human beings are contributing a large amount of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. 
So when we look back to our diagram, industry represents a really significant input of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So adding yet another layer to our previous equilibrium. Next up, kind of linked in with this burning fossil fuel idea, is the increased use of transport around the world. So as technology improved, things became cheaper. More and more people were able to afford personal transport, so cars and motorbikes. But along with that, as trade increased and technology increased, we were able to invent things like planes and boats and use these things much more often than we had done in the past. Most of this transportation requires the burning of fossil fuels, usually oil, so things like petrol and diesel, it's all derived from oil, which is another fossil fuel. And again, when that's burned, it releases carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. So this transportation all around the world increases our greenhouse gas layer around the planet even more so. Linked in with transportation is this idea of cheaper air travel. So more recently, air travel has become pretty cheap. So if you have one look at, you know, things like Ryanair or EasyJet, you can easily find plane tickets to different countries cheaper than you might find a train ticket. As a result, more and more people have been choosing to fly. And flying represents a very significant increase in greenhouse gases. Aviation fuel is again derived from oil, another fossil fuel. And once again, when it's burnt, carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere and it increases that greenhouse gas layer. So you can see here that increase in air travel adds another layer of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And then the final thing that human beings do which can contribute to climate change is deforestation. So deforestation can occur for lots of different varied reasons. So the actual taking of the wood, using that wood to create paper or furniture, but also clearing large tracts of land in the rainforest or within forests to farm them or to find mines. There's lots of different reasons why it happens, but it does happen and it happens on a very large scale around the planet. Now, the actual cutting down of the trees doesn't necessarily contribute more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. But as we looked at last lesson or in the last video, the Earth's forests represent what we call a carbon store. So they actually take in carbon from the atmosphere and they store it. And then as a byproduct, they actually produce oxygen, which is fantastic for us as we need that to live. As soon as we start chopping down the trees, we decrease that ability for the forest to hold on to that carbon. And as a result, you end up with more and more carbon in the atmosphere. So we go back to our diagram here. And if we take away our forests or take away most of our forests, then we severely limit that filtering system that our planet had of taking in the excess carbon dioxide and releasing the oxygen. And so what you end up having is yet more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now we have a look at this situation we are in now. We're a long, long way away from where we were at the beginning. And it's very, very difficult for us to call this an equilibrium. So where there's no doubt in my mind that there are natural causes of climate change. You know, our volcanoes haven't got anywhere. They are still contributing greenhouse gases. Our swamps haven't gone anywhere. They are still contributing greenhouse gases. But now we've got all these different sources which didn't exist before. All these sources that human beings are using to create more and more greenhouse gases. And by doing so, we increase this layer of greenhouse gases around our planet. And so the greenhouse effect becomes much, much stronger, which means that our planet heats up more and more. And that concept of global warming kicks in and we get to the point where a lot of scientists would agree we are currently at where our planet is heating up to the point at which we may not be able to return. So what do you think? Do you think that climate change is purely a natural process or do you think that human beings might have had something to do with it? If you're not sure, or if it helps change your mind, the IPCC, so the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, recently agreed that it's beyond reasonable doubt that human beings have had a significant impact in the climate of our planet, causing it to warm up. So thanks for watching. Like I said at the beginning, if you didn't see the previous video, go and check that out. So the natural causes of climate change. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye.